graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Hey there, everyone. My name's Lion O, and I'm the star of a new show called Thundercats Roar. Wait, you don't know what a Thundercat is? <laughs> Well, uh, let's start small. I'm a Thundercat, and this is my magic slicing stick. Sword of Omens! Give me sight beyond sight! Wow, that was fun! Who knew making animation was so complicated? Now, what do you say we watch a little video clip? Actually, I don't have any idea what this thing is. Let's see if it works like this! Your podcast will fast, will fast, will fast. It's just a coincidence that you were talking about the Jack and Triumph show and I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, guy who makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at Smodcast.com and you're listening to the Two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcasting. You're listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Stitcher app for Android devices. Please visit twostrangersonepodcast.net. Now, here's Chris Glow and Paul Pasquillo. Hello and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. The triumphant return of Paul. And of course, the minute we start recording, they start uh, cutting the grass outside the house. So... This is going to be back, Chris. There yet you go. another <laughs> wonderful Welcome episode. Back. Nothing, you know, uh, it's sort of funny how like, you know, and and I apologize for sort of, sort of not, I don't want to say ghosting is probably isn't the right word. Ghosting? But, uh, ghosting? Stalking? No, no, but like when, like, like I sort of, with the podcast, because people are like, are you and Paul fighting? Is there, you know, like people have reached out to me like, no, we're not yeah. fighting. It, you know, you're, you're a busy yeah. person. I'm very busy. You know, with two jobs and, and two, and, you know, the other podcasts uh, and everything like that. And, uh, me being without a car, like. It's become three pod. Oh. Jesus Christ. Well, there's a third podcast? <laughs> uh, Darrell and Paul show, or Paul Durrell show. Oh, okay. I, I remember you guys posting about, it. like, I remember seeing, like, like, a, a like, like the, the show art, but there's, there's. Oh, it exists. It's just under a paywall. Oh, it's under a paywall. Oh, okay, guys. Gotcha. People, if people want the best thing that they have ever heard, they will pay for it. Oh, okay, which and they then, don't, but that's fine, whatever. And it's funny because uh, Oscar, Oscar, super fan of the show, Oscar. Well, you know, longtime contributor of the show, Oscar. Uh, he had written, he had written an email, and he he wants us to have Darrell on the show. He 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 totally bashed me for having Jen on the show mm. last week. And uh, he hated the the Austin car casts because he said the audio was absolute shit. But uh, with that being I mean, said, I mean, I mean, I can read this email. This is back in March. If you want me to read this email to you, okay, uh, sure. Are you prepared? Are you sure, sure about oh, this? Oh boy, I'm you scared. Want to, you want, want me to go? Okay, I'm a little scared. He says, yeah. "Hey, Paul." By the way, he emails me on my Tsunami Faithful account, so I'm like, "Okay, somebody's paying attention." Finally, uh-huh. he's like, "Where the hell have you been?" Question mark. Two S One P has really turned to shit, like real garbage. <laughs> I'm devastated that the show turned that way. First, I was devastated when Kristen left. However, I got used to you and appreciate what you brought to the show, although I miss her dearly. I also enjoy Darrell very much. Darrell, I think Darrell blushed when I told him that. Um, <laughs> black men don't blush, but whatever. <laughs> now, quality is down all around. The audio is shit. The new guy is shit. The content is shit. You still, you want, you still want me to continue? Do, do, do you want me to course. keep going on this? Sure, sure. <laughs> well, that's a little Chris rambling like a unit, like a lunatic, laughing like a hyena to the most simple-minded things. I can't, I can't barely, I can't bear to listen anymore. I'm definitely not listening to your podcast, but because I, I couldn't give a shit about Tiami, <laughs> so I'm stuck listening to the more commercial podcasts out here, out there. Hope Chris gets this shit together. Time for an intervention. Z <laughs> well, Oscar's getting his, uh, his. Is it? And I haven't, I haven't had a chance to officially read this to Jen. So uh, I'll. This, okay, he wrote about the last episode that we did with Jen. Okay, dude, Jennifer, really? Her voice is horrid. It's like coffee talk from an old <laughs> Michael Myers SNL sketch. Like she smokes eighty six Newports a day. I was so happy when the audio was better, but to hear, I was happy that the audio was better, but to hear Jennifer, uh the one diamond piece of knowledge is that she did say. That you're not a total douche for not communicating with Paul. And I apologize for that. Okay. Yeah. You are not a hypocrite because if the rules were reverse, uh, you'd hate that Paul totally ignored you and just dismissed you. Oh, uh, sh- you should communicate <laughs> with him. Um, he doesn't need to chauffeur you or to placate you and to remain in your good graces. Jesus it's your price, Oscar. It's your podcast. So man up. 
Paul has his own things going on. Unlike you, <laughs> he is able to uh, uh, he's uh, he's able to hold down two jobs, maintain a relationship, hold down his family, uh, which is holy a little... <laughs> shit. Jesus Christ, Oscar! What <laughs> which the is, fuck? Which is rough to say, but maybe oh. old cynical woe is me, Chris. I thought could... my email was bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, could take notice uh, that the younger Paul is holding his shit together. Wow. Uh, he owes you nothing. I would like a public apology to Paul on air. And I, once again, I apologize, Paul. <laughs> uh, you owe it to him. Uh, <coughs> and then he sort of just goes on about the last episode about not oh, wanting to hear shit. Jen talk about her selling nail files and God, stuff like that. Oscar, what the fuck? Then wow. it, <laughs> Dude, I know your life is shit, your sucky job, wherever you can hold one. Always crying about how the world is against you. You're fat, you're broke, you don't get pussy, you don't have a car. <sighs> Cry me a river, get your Jesus shit together. Christ. Ask Paul for forgiveness and oh your selfish ways and lack of Kristen, so please uh, spare us. Austin is no Paul. Uh, That's for sure. Move up. I'm move awesome. out of the way. <laughs> Stop pushing. They don't agree with you. <laughs> Stop pushing out garbage. Uh, when your favorite TV show starts putting out horrible episodes because the network wants to squeeze every little bit of life out of it, you're destroying your brand. I'd much, much rather you not put anything out than <coughs> remember the decent days and being bombarded with your literal shit you've been putting out. Paul put out one episode with Darrell and made me remember and appreciate what 2S1P used to be. Plus, I'm a huge Darrell fan. Too bad... Uh, Darrell fan? Jesus, all right. Uh, too bad those assholes are tsunami fags. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to listen to the... Uh, I, I would listen to them over you. Evaluate your quality control, dude. Okay. Jesus. God. Yeah. What so you, the... gotta, you gotta love the triumphant return and then just, just bashing. Jesus. That was just like... That was just like... Audio slaughter. That... I... <laughs> I'm speechless at that. I'm just like, uh, uh. hi, Oscar. How you doing? So we're back. Um, hi. <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, uh, fuck. I guess let's just jump right into it. I guess one of the bigger things that were go- that was going on this week. I mean, along amongst a bunch of other things, is the Thundercats roar controversy. Do you really want to talk about this? And uh, <laughs> and it's sort of weird because like. I had put out a post about, I said, I have literally, literally have seen no positive reviews or no positive reactions to Thundercats Roar. And yes, it's a 30 second animated clip. You know, we don't see any of the action. We don't see any of the, uh, you know, we, you know, and at that particular time, we just saw Lionel. I mean, since then, they've released like a, like a, a quote unquote well, set photo of like, everybody well you also got to keep in mind here's the, here's the thing too you can't hate on somebody who's doing the lead of the thundercats and he's also one punch man so you can't really hate on that so mm-hmm. it's kind of like oh, yeah i do the voice actor yeah mm-hmm. it's actually it looks like it's an all i mean i don't want to say that it's an all anime cast but it seems like an all anime cast mm-hmm. honestly like it's if you time. were to look at if you were to look at an anime and then you were to look at this it, it, it's actually like uh, several anime voice actors and actresses, I believe. So it's because yeah. did I did I meet the guy who did the voice for Satama? Uh, <laughs> no, we didn't get to, no. He was he a, no no we didn't get to meet him. Okay, no, but like when I did the interview with the guy, so one yeah, Punch you're talking Man? about like two years ago. No, yeah. <laughs> um, no, he wasn't there. But it was it was really because it was really weird. Like this is like oh here's these guys, and I'm like well where's Max? They're like oh Max couldn't come. I'm like. How do you do this without Max being here? <laughs> like Jesus Christ! He's too busy recording. <laughs> no, go. he's really busy. Like I, I've, I've had a really hard time trying to like lock him down for an interview. It's mm-hmm. very hard. And then you were talking to Jason DeMarco, which is going to be on another podcast. Uh, what? So that was that? Is that? Oh no! Mean, oh, should mean, I? Should I? You mean that, like Jason DeMarco? That's on this computer right here. Yes. Uh, was that? And that's re- in regards mm-hmm. to what? 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 What were you? Well, it, well, basically. We reach out, we usually reach out when, when Toonami does something like this for, like, a show, and we're like, hey, we want to interview somebody. Within two seconds, I get an email, sure, when do you want to interview them? Oh, okay. Now, it didn't exactly go that way this time. It was more like, oh, we have this time and date, can you do this? And I'm like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, it was hard to set up the one interview, and then they're like, oh, so do you want to interview Jason? I was like, yes. Mm-hmm. I haven't interviewed Jason in a while, so Yes. And I said to him, I was like, but here's the thing. I'm not going to interview him unless I can ask Tsunami questions. Because mm-hmm. I'm not going to have that many Fully Cooly questions. I'm, I mean, and he's Fool- probably going to... Okay, Fully Cooly? Yeah, that's... Um, 
uh, Adult Swim is doing two more seasons of it. It's oh, basically okay. it's when you talk about an anime classic, Fully Cooly is a six episode anime that a lot of people don't. It, it pretty much is like a masterpiece in a lot of people's minds. So mm-hmm. a lot of people right now, it's kind of the same along <coughs> along the lines of Thundercats, where they don't want you to kind of they don't want you to touch it mm-hmm. and destroy it or do anything to to hurt it. But yeah. at the same time, they're like, I kind of want to see what you're going to do. Yeah. So, um, unlike Thundercats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, so, that's what I originally had him on for. And then, well, you heard it. I, sh- I let you yeah. listen to it for a minute. He's just like, he's like, he's like, no, 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 Paul, I want to talk about some Thundercats today, though, too. And I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. I'm like, so, I'm in trouble. I'm so as a, a teaser for a future episode of the, of, of the podcast, for, for your podcast, with yeah. Tsunami Faithful, uh, the, the, the Fooly Cooly episode, Jason DeMarco, he kind of, he kind of schools you on. He doesn't like, we, school, okay, like, so it doesn't, it's not like I'm getting destroyed or anything, uh-huh. but he kind of, it's more of like an educational in process. Defensive. And you know, it is like, I mean, like growing up, like with, with a show like Thundercats Go, like, and I get like, okay, yeah, they're trying to get a new audience. Uh, you know, obviously, like, you know, uh, uh, the, our, us as an audience, we're gonna watch it because, you know, like, it's Thundercats. Like, right. everyone's gonna give it, everyone's gonna People. at least test, you know, like, I mean, as in, like, you know, the, the, the running thing is that, oh, this looks like Steven Universe, this looks like Gumball, yeah. this looks like, I, and, and I've seen Steven Universe and I've seen Gumball, but usually it's because, like, my daughter's watching or something like that. Yeah, but, um, but Steven Universe and even even um, what's the what's the other series that was really um, popular? Gravity Falls or is it Gravity? Oh, is no, that- no, 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 no. I'm trying to. It wasn't Steven Universe? It was. Um, <clears throat> God, I'm trying to think of the name. Uh, Finn. Oh, um, Adventure Time. Adventure Time. There we yeah. go. Yeah. So, I mean, it was. It's kind of one of those things where it's like those two were good. The animation in those two were good, but this one is is crap. And it's just like, okay, well, I just. Don't I don't understand? Well, I, I mean, know. it's I mean, this whole thing is that, like when Steven Universe came out, it wasn't like <coughs> me, a forty-year-old man, was going to go. Oh, I'm going to check out Steven Universe. I mean, my I, kid. I, yeah. I I watched it and it seemed interesting. At least, but you know, they they take a intellectual property like Thundercats and come out and like I'm going to go. Okay, let me check it out because it's the Thundercats. Well, how whatever iteration it is, but they're also now they're going to c- cater to a young audience, which. You know, I'm hoping like maybe there's a there's a long term goal for this where like Thundercats, you know, another thirty years from now <laughs> they'll be like a really awesome cartoon. Like like the same way like my generation grew up like the last you know, the last well not the last Star Wars movie, but you know, Return of the Jedi, like we got sucked in because of Ewoks. You know, <laughs> I was I was six years old when Return of the Jedi came out. So like my you know, I was excited about seeing Ewoks. Yes, then eventually got Sucked into you know Star Wars and yeah. the Emperor and Darth Vader and all that shit. So I'm wondering if maybe this, if there's some maybe a like long term goal, like we'll get them hooked as kid, like a drug dealer mentality. Like we'll get them hooked while they're young, and then that means you know in another thirty years we could reboot Thundercats again Thundercats and get the adult. Is, audience. Well, I, Jason kind of alluded to that too. Like Thundercats is going to be one of those things that you're going to see over and over again. So you might as well get used to it. Like a like a uh, Teen Titans go. <laughs> so I, I think that pretty much. The reason why a lot of people get pissed about Thundercats is because it's 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 like our Batman. Basically, you don't fuck with Batman. The rule is you don't fuck with Batman. If you do something shitty with Batman, you're gonna hear about it. Yeah. You know, as Batman fan, I'm sure you can. Yeah, the animated series. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <clears throat> you know, they that's I think that's why they haven't even tried to touch Batman in a. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they had Brave and the Bold, but I mean, you know, they, they're very careful. They're yeah. very careful about how they touch Batman. They need to be a lot more careful. Well, there was, yeah, there was the Batman, but I mean, yeah. yeah, okay, go on, go on. Well, actually, what was it? The Bat? I think the Batman. That's, that's the one that's on Netflix now. It used to be on Warner Brother uh, Kids WB. That was actually a good series. I mm-hmm. I, I watched it after the fact, mm-hmm. actually, maybe about a year or two ago, and I was very impressed with that series. I I actually kind of felt bad because I was like, oh, this this guy doesn't look that good. And then when I actually sat down and watched it, I was like, this actually is really good. Mm-hmm. So, and it was kind of funny because they would. <clears throat> They wouldn't use like Mark Hamill for Joker, but then they would they put him in a couple times as different characters. Mm-hmm. Same thing with uh, what's his name? Um, Tim Conroy? Uh, Conroy, yeah, Kevin Conroy. I mean. Kevin Conroy. They they would they would put him in every like he was uh, Bruce Wayne's father, I think. Ah, uh, okay. Well, they probably don't have the yeah. money to have him. You know. He, he oh hell no! That. No, they don't. Hell no! <laughs> hell no! They don't know what they don't know how what money is. Honestly, 
That's what happened with Thundercats. They only they didn't have enough money. That's I mean it's yeah, and that's where like I'm like maybe you know we'll give it a shot because like everyone was opposed to Teen Titans Go. You know, when that after Teen Titans, after you know the original Teen Titans, you know, and Young Justice, and then they go out with Teen Titans Go, people had fucking heart attacks. But then, like, you know, they had like a couple episodes, like the night begins to shine. You know, the night begins. You know, the, and like there are people, you know, that are older, you know, fans that are sort of like, you know, what I didn't like. I didn't when I heard about the show, I didn't like it. But when they have like episodes like the night begins to shine, like it sort of like endears himself to older people and stuff like that. So, well, they also they also started to. <clears throat> if you've noticed, they started to mesh in the original Teen Titans, too. It was really weird, because they would play, like, a couple episodes of Teen Titans Go, and then they would play the original, and you're just like, are you trying to fuck with us here or something? What's going on here? Yeah, and it's like, like, when I was a kid, well, I mean, it was it was an old repeat when I was a kid also, but even, like, the Super Friends, you know, like, the cartoon The Super Friends, like, that got me into, like, I wouldn't, I don't think I would care as much as about, like, Batman and and you know like even like the like the recent Justice League movie. If I wasn't a fan of like the uh, the Super Friends back in the day, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I get that it's an entry point. You know, obviously I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna be a little pissed off because it's like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> you know, you took an action cartoon and fucking uh, made it like, especially when there was one, there was a version that was that was a really good reboot of it. You know, and that that's I think that's part of the problem too. Is a lot of people are like that brings up. The, these bad things of what happened with the 2011 version. You gotta understand, with the 2011 version of Thundercats, what happened was... And this isn't even out of Jason DeMarco's mouth. What happened was, is there was another show called Lego Chima. Mm-hmm. We joked that it was kind of the Thundercats version, mm-hmm. Lego version. It, it really wasn't. It was nothing like it. But mm-hmm. <clears throat> the problem was, is that show was cheaper than making Thundercats. Mm-hmm. So they decided to just be done with Thundercats and make that. Mm-hmm. Problem was, is Chima eventually failed too, so it was like... Yeah, you know, the, the, the funny thing is, I only know about Chima because, like, there's, like, two characters in Lego and, Dimensions. And the <laughs> problem was, plays. and and I think this kind of shows where we were starting to go with toys now, was Thundercats toys didn't sell. So it was a bunch of, it was a bunch of things, and even J- Jason alludes to this in the, in the interview, is, like... It was a very complicated situation. It mm. wasn't just one thing. It was... The ratings were... Actually, if you look back at the ratings, the initial mm. ratings for the Cartoon Network were... And then even having it on Tsunami were great. Mm. The problem is, is that it wasn't selling toys. It was expensive to make. Yeah. And... Um, <clears throat> there was something else. Um, and then, you know, they had to choose what? between making Chima or this one. Yeah. And they made the wrong choice, but whatever. And it's like... I mean, I remember when it came out, and and maybe it's just me, and maybe it's just my point of view. I feel like they didn't give it the push it should, it, it deserved. Like, well, I, I don't and, think and they gave it. There's, there's. I don't want to give too much away from the interview, but there's, there's a, there's a, a time in here where he talks about when they went to go get it for tsunami, mm-hmm. um, and it was. It's it, his response was interesting because they never really Cartoon Network didn't want Thundercats to go anywhere other than Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. So when Adult Swim comes to you and goes, yeah, we want that show since you're not using it, they kind of go, uh, okay, we didn't <laughs> expect this. So it's 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 interesting because it's just like, so you never expected this series to do to go beyond Cartoon Network, but you're realizing now that you had a deeper fan base mm-hmm. here. Um, and th- you know the other problem is is like they sit there and they go, well, the du- the Blu-ray sales and that probably weren't good either. You didn't advertise the Blu-ray sale. Yeah. You didn't advertise the DVD sale. You didn't do that. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you didn't. Mm-hmm. I don't remember 50,000 commercials about, oh, go buy Thundercats on DVD now. No, I yeah, don't remember that's, that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, mean, I, I mean, I've been without cable for a couple of years, but I mean, that the, the reboot was in 2011, right? Yeah. And, and like, I, I had cable and back then. And we had, in, thir- in 2013, it was the second year of Toonami, um, they brought it onto the block mm-hmm. because it was just sitting there. That was sitting there. Symbiotic Titan was sitting there. You know, they took a bunch of those. They took a couple of those series that were sitting there on Friday. They yeah. eventually took Star Wars too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, Star Wars actually, I think during 2013 was still playing in the morning because it was still very popular. Mm-hmm. But there again, I still sit there and shake my head, and I'm like, even that, even that suffered from bad ratings. Like, had it, had they just kept it at Friday? Because all the ratings that I saw were from Friday for Thundercats. Mm-hmm. They were really good. Star Wars was was excellent. It was wonderful. Yeah, I remember and that. And you can block. push you can push the Star Wars toys. 
Doesn't matter. I mean, doesn't matter what it is. Anything Star Wars gets pushed usually. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll see with we'll see with Solo coming out this week. But yeah, well, that you know, the good transition because like we're, we're sitting here today. <laughs> Technically, Solo comes out tonight. Yeah, I gotta go work uh, that tonight. Yeah, and 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 like <clears throat> so far, you know, early reviews of saying it's it's good, it's it's fun, it's uh, it's it's one of those things where it is. You don't know, like for me, being the, the person that has to deal with the people that come into the theater, you don't mm-hmm. know. You sit there and you go, because I, I have to do the schedule, so I'm like, it's Memorial Day weekend. Am I going to get a lot of people this weekend? Well, I don't know, because this is this is a yeah. Star Wars movie. It's different from Rogue. It's different from the, re- from the original trilogy, so are people actually going to come and watch this? I mean, I was surprised by Rogue, so I wouldn't be surprised if Solo did well, too. I think too. so, because you know what it is? If you take Joe Blow off the street, it isn't like a diehard Star Wars fan. You say Rogue One, they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But you say about Star Wars. Han, that's what I'm saying. No, I'm saying when you say, like I'm saying Star Wars, when like Rogue One, even though technically it's a Star Wars movie, like there's even like the name itself, like ro- what the what does that mean? You take some Han Solo, like you know, yeah. the, you know the, the you know you know you got you know Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia. I mean, I hate to put it in that order, but you know of like the most po- and of course Darth Vader. But I mean, like you know the top four characters in that series has his own movie. I, there's enough name reckon like my mom knows who fucking Han Solo is, you know. My, my, my mom doesn't care about, I say Rogue One, my mom's not gonna go. If I say Han Solo, my mom's like, oh, you know. Of course, my mom will probably think Harrison Ford's in a movie. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> well, Harrison Ford apparently gave his blessing on this. Yeah. And, 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 and they know, apparently, they, they didn't, he wasn't in the movie, but they, they used him a lot to kind of gauge the character that they wanted to make because mm-hmm. they wanted to make sure that he kind of, that he matched as much yeah, that as it possible. Fits, yeah, it fits in the, uh, you know, and I mean, it, you know, this movie, it, it started with good roots, you know, Lord Lord and Miller, you know, the original directors. I mean, yeah, they got kicked off, but you know, uh, oh my God, why am I drawing a blank on the director? Uh, Rich, uh, the <laughs> Tom Hanks. Well, uh, the guy who usually Richie does Cunningham. Tom Hanks movies. Um, I can't think of his name. I know who you're talking about. I was, I was saying Richie Cunningham from uh, Richard Cunningham. No, it's not him. <laughs> no, but I was saying the guy who played he play, from uh, Happy Days. Um, yeah, I know who you're talking. Well, I'm, about. I, yeah, yeah. I'm in front of my computer and I could just look it up. But yeah, yeah I mean, you know, he makes good movies. Willow, uh, you know, Apollo That's, 13. There, there might be a second Willow coming too. I've oh yeah, heard, I've heard with, rumblings of that. Actually. Oh yeah, with that, yeah, him him doing that. Uh, yeah, the, well, I, I breathe, it, breathe, <laughs> breathe. It's fine. Ron Howard. Ron know. Howard. There you go. Ron Howard. You know, uh, Ron Howard. I don't think I have. I don't think Ron. I, like, I haven't seen all of his movies, but I've never said, "Oh, no. Ron Howard." I never went. Ron Howard. Ew. You know, like this. And even when you, they you announced always it, know. You always know when there's a Ron Howard movie. Honestly. Yeah. Um. So like they said. But yeah, I mean, it's 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 going to be interesting to see how this movie does. I will say that I expect this because, like, last year. I hate to say it, but there were some pretty shitty movies last year during this time of Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. So when I looked at the numbers of what we did last year, I'm like, "There's no way we're gonna hit. We're gonna be this low because like we only did like a thousand people on a Saturday." Mm-hmm. And yeah, okay, granted it was the holiday, but we didn't have a Deadpool, an Avengers, and now Solo mm-hmm. all in the same time. So and this is the second week of Deadpool. This is gonna be that coming in. So I, I really expect us to do pretty well this weekend, especially with Solo, but. I just don't know. Solo is kind of one of those ones where this is unknown territory. Yeah, you can take a Star Wars movie and pack a theater, or you can take an Avengers movie and pack a theater, which Avengers did better than Star Wars, <laughs> but it's sort of Black Panther, which is really weird. Um, but it's, you know, we'll, we'll see how it does. I, I kind of hope that it does well. Yeah, I mean, the weather's nice. So that's not good. Well, see, that's the other thing too. That's the other thing too. Is like I when I when I go to do a schedule, I look at the weather and I'm like, okay. Well, at least Saturday, in, Ro- in Rochester, it's going to be nice. I can't speak with the rest of the Well, country, Saturday, right? Sunday, Monday, it's supposed to rain all three days. So I'm like, okay, so I'm going to make sure I have enough people on these days just in case. Oh, okay. Because, you know, rain equals people going out to the movies. And then, you know, depending on how the other theaters do that are luxury seating, if they sell out, which they do very quickly, mm-hmm. you know, people will be in your theater. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, I think... I really think that they should have put this. I don't think there's another Star Wars movie this year. So yeah, I don't, no, there's, I don't, there's not another Star Wars movie till Christmas of next year. Yeah, it, 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 it sounds weird. Like usually, that would be like that's great. Only uh, we only have to wait till Christmas of next year. But now, since they've been pumping out so many movies, it's sort yeah, of like I don't understand why. Like it, it hasn't been. Like, <laughs> it's like we have to wait so long. <laughs> why, I don't know why they just didn't put this. Like I, it kind of 
confuses me because I'm like, if they would have put this at December fifteenth, this probably would do better than it is going to do. Honestly, yeah, they should. I they. Sh- I mean, as much as I, I want, I, I want to see Solo right now. They should have. They should have put it in December. I, I think. That, I think they're gonna. Th- I think this is kind of like a test to see like how a Star Wars movie will do around this time. Well, remember, no, because remember all the like the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy all came out in May. Yeah. And it was with the Force Awakens that they said let's experiment and put it around Christmas because then and then they had Force Friday and Ugh. and 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 uh, you know and, and you know and it turned out like fucking they you know and then well. Last Jedi came out on Christmas. Like, they realized, oh, shit, we can own Christmas with Star Wars. And as much as, you know, I'm happy to see Solo, you know, I'm planning to see Solo sometime in the next couple of days. Uh, you know, they, sh- in my opinion, they should have waited to Christmas. Like, what, what, are, there's nothing, what is, there, there's no Avengers or Star Wars. So at least, like, you know, like, they, they had, Marvel had Black Panther in February, Avengers in, 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 in May, you know. I don't even cool know, like, for a bit. so how, how long is, it, like, Avengers, the next one's supposed to be next year, isn't it? The next one, the next one is next year, but between now and then is going to be Captain Marvel. When does Captain Marvel come out? That's what I was kind of confused about. I want to say March or April? Of next year? Of next year. So it's going to be the, it's going to be the Black Panther of last year, where, like, um... I mean, they better, they better either move that up or whatever, because that, that, that just makes me feel like Avengers is going to be, like, right up against it. Well, the, look at the way, I mean, look at the way Black Panther, and I mean, you know, Black Panther was February. Uh, yeah, but Black Mar- Panther it, it, was, you know, Black Panther was definitely a surprise. I mean, I yeah. wasn't surprised, because I know a lot of people liked Black Panther mm. as a character. It was just really weird to see, like, that just explode out of nowhere. Yeah, As of right now, it's March 6th. Of of when's next Avengers year? supposed to be out? And Avengers, I'm sorry, it has to be May. It it's either it's, I would I hope it's like June or July because oh want, they would be smart yeah if they made it like like Fourth of July I would want it to be like a little bit more space yeah no that. look Jesus Christ May third yeah. so they're, they're bumping right up against each other well if you wonder if you if you saw what what happened what happened which was um. Um, and I guess we're gonna, we're gonna say we we're gonna say spoilers. God damn it, it's been long enough. No, 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 uh, no, not spoilers. I was saying that. No, what happened of... with like so? Avengers was originally set for the first day in May this mm-hmm. year. They moved it up, which pissed off a bunch of my bunch of general managers at my company. But because mm-hmm. you gotta understand, part of me being busy, I'm a first assistant now, so it's like so. I, whenever the GM's not there, actually, because of the situation, I'm kind of more GM than I am right now than I'm supposed to be, but. um it's it's like so that week they went they had a GM conference, but then they moved up Avengers. Mm-hmm. So two days in, they're not even there. Two days into this Avengers thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm sitting here going, okay, well I'll I'll be there Friday. <laughs> I'll be there Friday, and I he he was there Saturday, so I I took Saturday off. I was like, I'll take Saturday. Off. Well, I mean, I'm wondering like all these movies now, like, and it's funny because everyone keeps talking about how the you know. The, Business is going down. Business is going down. It's but not. like, but we're also. I mean, there's they're breaking records. Here's here here's what's going on. So what's happening is is it's kind of like what's happening with JC Penney's Sears. Well, not so much Sears. Sears is a whole different situation. Like JC Penney's, for example. JC Penney's built all these stores, mm-hmm. and I'm and when I say JC Penney's, I'm talking about all the ones like Bonton. Uh, Macy's. I was gonna say Kaufman's, but that became Macy's. Mm-hmm. Got them all. Um, <laughs> so you you see all these stores, and what they did was is they they would put like three or four stores in one area. Yeah. So now people aren't shopping as much at outside. Now that's not saying that they aren't. Rochester's mar- market is very good to where people are still mm-hmm. shopping in malls and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So what happens is is now you have all these stores and you're oversaturating a market not everybody's gonna everybody will probably be going to one jc as, as opposed to another mm-hmm. you know so for example like movie theaters my company has four in the area right there's there's also uh, there's one two three more three or four more other big ones that are in in the area mm-hmm. so you have to understand that you have probably if i, if I had to take it I don't want to say ten thousand seats mm-hmm. altogether, it, and when I say ten thousand seats, I mean all the seats no, together. All the theaters combined. I want to say it's close to ten thousand with all those theaters. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about a very saturated market. So, for example, like if one of these theaters were to drop off, uh-huh. it would, you know, some of these other theaters would become a lot busier. My theater happens to be busy because 
the luxury theaters will sell out the ones that have luxury seating and then people will come to us you know as one of the theaters that they go to so you know we do really well when it's an avengers movie but then like if you have like a movie like uh what was that breaking was was a recent movie um we don't do that much for it yeah i mean it's not these these movies you know well, I mean, because it is I was, what it is. But I mean, like when they when they moved up Avengers, it was sort of like when they say the industry is going down. They, that's what they say. But I mean, like, but then like Black Panther and like Infinity War. So had like they had pre sales were were right. ridiculously high, and then they go, then these bastards go, all right, we got all these great pre sales. Let's push the movie up a week. So all these people that are like, man, I'm going to see it the first day before anybody else, before the internet has a chance to spoil it, they go. Fuck! Now you know they already paid for their seats for the pre-sale. Well, they, they can do that through Fandango. You can change that. So okay. those that are buying it online, because that's where you're pretty much doing it now. Mm-hmm. Um, and it'd be like, yeah, fuck it. Like you know, now I gotta buy it. Now I gotta see it twice. Well, and, and, and the other, <laughs> see that's the other. Not that problem. they're complaining, but it's like, <laughs> that's that's the other thing that I'm that I'm leading into is like when you have a year like this year where we have so many big blockbuster movies, mm-hmm. there's no way that your theater isn't going to be up in business. You know what I mean? So it's it's kind of like it's. It's there's there's a two there's a two thing here. You either have to have luxury seating to be doing really well now, or there has to be really good movies out, and that that's what's been happening. I mean, we'll probably be up this month. I, I predict we'll definitely be up this month from last year. Mm-hmm. But last year's summer was shit. Yeah, it was really bad. I think we had around this time we had. I looked at it the other day. Pirates the 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 Pirates of the Caribbean movie uh-huh. and Baywatch, and you know both of those bombed really mm-hmm. bad. And I, I've heard really good things about Pirates. I never saw that one. But the point that I'm making is, is you know, it depends on what movies you have. If we if we had better movies, mm-hmm. like we have this year, we would have done so much better. But, yeah. you know, it, it is what it is. It's the movies. It's not anything else. So Valerian bombed. Valerian Valerian <laughs> was another... See, it, it's, it's the same thing that happened with the new Blade Runner. Excellent anime. I actually saw it. I, I saw it before, and it was it was really good. I was really su- I was like, this is a really good movie. I'm really surprised people don't watch it. And that's the thing. Sci fi is gone. Unless it's Avenge. Unless it's like Marvel, Star Wars, anything affiliated with that. If it's not affiliated with that at all, it doesn't do well. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, that's what it is. There might be you know. There's rumbling. People know. We're all waiting for it because we're we're not stupid. You know the the new Harry Potter that play that 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 she put out mm. for you know Harry Potter and an cursed older age child cursed something. child. Okay. I there's I can't see that not being a movie at some point. That's going to be one that's going to be interesting to see. Okay, let's see how this does now in this day and age with mm. Harry Potter because there was I mean Harry Potter was every time you had a Harry Potter that was like an Avengers. Yeah, and that's that's what the like a lot of the industry right now is trying to find. Okay, what is going to do the most business and what disney has found is okay well we have avengers yes we know these are going to do it but what is what outside can we make money on mm-hmm. well let's dive back into our old disney movies and look mm-hmm. what happened with beauty and the beast yeah beauty and the beast was like you're sitting there going why do i have so many people in this theater <laughs> <laughs> like like this is just beauty and the beast haven't you seen the, yeah. the beauty and the beast before no 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 we haven't seen the live action version yeah. okay and, and wait till you know and then they'll, you know, there'll be a, and eventually I'm pretty sure there'll be a Mulan and there'll be. Uh, there is, there's a Mulan. There's, there's, there's a, a little mermaid. Uh, I want to say yeah. there's, I want to say there's an Aladdin too. Yeah, you know, I know there's a Mulan. You already got coming. the Jungle Book. Like, I mean, not Jungle Book, uh, Lion King, you know, the John Favreau from Iron Man 1 has Lion King lined up, you know, and so that's going to be. So yeah. it's, it's, let me put it to you this way. As much as is Disney seems to be that evil empire, it's mm. also saving the industry. Honestly. Yeah. Well, because they, <laughs> they want to make money. And here's yeah. the thing. The one thing that I always tell people is this. Mm-hmm. People think that movie theaters are going to die at some point. Here's mm-hmm. the problem. And I say this, I've said this before, I will say this again. Mm-hmm. When you make billions of dollars in the theater uh-huh. and then make billions of dollars more when it comes to Blu-ray and DVD, why would you take away the first segment? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, that doesn't work with every movie these days. There are some movies where I literally look at that movie, Chris, and I go, why is that on Netflix? I'm like, why do, Why am I wasting my time with this movie? It's not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. That's what they need to start doing. Like, there's a Sylvester Stallone movie. It's, it's been advertised on Facebook a couple times, I saw, where it's going directly to Blu-ray and DVD. Because mm-hmm. they don't know how well it's going to do. It's got 50 Cent in it. It's got some other big actors in it, too. Mm-hmm. And you're sitting there going, okay, so if they're doing it, why are not more companies doing it? They should be doing it. 
Because here's the thing, like you're getting three revenue streams. Movie theater, DVD and Blu-ray sales, and Netflix. And by the way, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to keep a movie in, in theaters for three or four weeks. If it's going to be a shit movie, put it in the theaters for one week and then get rid of it. Mm. Make one week deals and move it on. There was a Hellraiser. That went straight to Blu-ray and DVD. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I have enough friends. Uh, my, yeah. My, my friends and, are and I'm like sitting there going, movie fans. I'm yeah. sitting there going, so that doesn't have a theatrical run. No. Okay. Then you're idiots. <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously. You, like, you could put that... I don't understand why some movies that the industry knows is not going to do anything doesn't just get a one-week run and then gets out of theaters. Well, like, what's the Natalie Portman one where she finds... They find, like, it's alien, like... There's, it looks like a... a, a it, it oh, just I know what you're talking about. Um, I want to say Annihilation. No, it wasn't Annihilation. Annihil- yeah, I think it was Annihilation. Yeah. Annihilation? And, and it's Annihilation, and it's like... But I didn't... I didn't. I, I mean, not that I... Here in the... Well, it, it was here in the United States, yeah, but, but everywhere else in the world is on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, so... You know, and, and let me tell you, like, I mean... But, like, when things go right to Netflix, like... I I liked, like, the Cloverfield Paradox. Don't get me wrong. I liked it. You know, I didn't love it. I don't know if I'd exactly run out to the theater to go see it. Like if, like if they said, you know, oh, there's a movie coming out, Clover, you know, Cloverfield Three, the Cloverfield Paradox. You know, even though it wasn't that wasn't the name, but I mean, you know, that's how I would look at it. Like, oh, there's you know, Cloverfield Ten, Cloverfield Lane, now Cloverfield Paradox. I don't know if I'd exactly run out to the theater and go see it. So like some things, like they go, like I mean, it, it, it sounds like even in the days of you know DVD and you know, a direct to DVD, direct to yeah, direct to VHS, like some movies they don't video know video on demand, yeah, video yeah. on demand, like they don't know they don't know what it's gonna do. So they um they you know they put it like and the movie you're talking about is the Escape Plan, which I never excuse me Escape Plan Escape Plan three because <laughs> no, I remember two the, and three oh two and three because I know the original Escape Plan was 2013, but that had that had it starts Sylvester Stallone, but Arnold Schwarzenegger was in it, but he was in it for like he wasn't in it for like you know he was it, it was like a glorified cameo he was in it but not for the the whole length of the movie so uh, yeah that was it that's the movie you're talking about is Escape Plan now a moment ago we were talking about Lion King and uh, since we are talking about Lion King and Star Wars or a moment ago uh, Donald Glover because Donald Glover is playing Simba. Is the voice of Simba in the live mm-hmm. action Lion King, and in Solo, uh, the writers of the movie have said that Lando Calrissian is pansexual, <laughs> which means you know just just, just, just here here let, he'll, let, he's let gonna, me clean that, let me he's, clean that he's up. Gonna fuck anything he's bisexual. With the hole. <laughs> okay, he's just bisexual. There you go. Well, I mean, see now you know if you in real wait, wait, life, we'll invent one alien sexual. Well, that's okay, the thing. Like you, you know, that's like in the Star Wars universe, that means a whole other thing because not only mean men and women, but it also means aliens and, <laughs> yeah. and all types of other species. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, animals, droids. Uh, you know, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, you know, it's just I, I I just put that in my notes as um with the uh, with the with the solo stuff. Now I, I just saw Deadpool two uh, the other day, mm-hmm. and uh, I gotta say it was good. It's hard. It's weird for me to say that I don't think it was better than part one, even though it was. I've, I've heard. I've heard. I've heard like it's the, the, bigger. The, than... the consensus that I've heard is that it's it's good, but. There, are, there are like a little bit of there's a little issue, couple issues, but then it's like the the because of you know who Ryan Reynolds is, like uh-huh. he just he kills it as Deadpool again. And I've heard I heard the credits the the after credit scene already. I've heard that. So. Yeah, the after credit scene is it's fantastic. And I, I mean, I don't know, I don't want to discuss spoilers or not, but you know, I mean, my my, my point being is that is it bigger? Yeah, is it, it funnier? probably you know is there there's a lot more characters you know when you know the first movie there was only three now there's like seven or eight or whatever you know what i mean char- established characters in the in the marvel and the, in the marvel universe and uh, uh but just i don't know for some reason like like i kind of i i was like fighting sleep in the theater when i when i went to go see it like you know and, I, and that's how that's never a good sign when i'm like in a movie and i'm like i'm like forcing my eyes to stay open you know I maybe mean, you should watch it when you're not when you're not working 50 hours yeah <laughs> and uh yeah but not having to, yeah because you know like my days now with my new job is i'm sort of like i'm i, I leave for work early i don't get home so i mean i don't get home till like midnight anyway i have to, i i leave early one because i'm taking i don't have a car so i'm taking the bus but then like i'm i'm, I'm splitting that time between like you know getting to the library and then then i go to work and stuff like that trying to you know trying to get shit taken care of um but yeah, like when I went to go see Deadpool, like 
you know, like it was good, but like I don't, I just I liked one better. Like like one, I was like, since I finished seeing part one, I'm like, I want to see that again. I want to buy the Blu-ray right now. You know, uh, two. I mean, like, yeah, of course I'll watch it again, but I'm not, like, super excited. I'm not, like, super jazzed. And, you know, it had, I don't know, I, I, maybe we shouldn't, because it's so still so new, maybe not spoil it. But, like, there's a couple celebrities in this movie that, like, literally, you know, they have small parts. But it's like, oh, shit, there's so-and-so, there's this person. That was cool. The post credit scene, or should I say, uh, the, it's, well, it's not spoil, the, the, the mid credit scene. There is no post credit scene. Like, there's no yeah. after the theater. The one cool thing is... Uh, and it's not really spoiling. They kind of, t- they, they do a take on just like dramatic mu- music in a movie or whatever. And so at the end of the credits, you can hear the dramatic music more clearly. And that's funny. But it's that doesn't yeah, I heard that a, at the end of the credits yeah. actually the other day when I was in the theater. So it's, it's not, that's not technically a post credit scene. But the mid credit scene is fucking brilliant. I think the mid credit scene alone makes up for the boring parts of Deadpool. Like I the, think, the, the, I, I think the, the, just the song that Celine Dion did was is incredible. Yeah, I, you know, and then you know there was a big push on like, oh, let's make this, uh, you know, like since Deadpool's this like R-rated action comedy movie, but then like, okay, let's have Celine Dion, and then there's like in the beginning of the movie, and it's not really a spoiler, you know, he he he, he there's like a whole killing scene. He's there's a scene where he's traveling throughout the world just killing people because he's a mercenary to fucking dolly parton's nine to five <laughs> you know what i'm saying and it's like you know that's hilarious uh, yeah, yeah and it's sort of you know and i get what they're doing they're trying to show like oh here, let's play like a, a song that you know the like i don't know not pop or anything like that but you know it's not you know but let's play this song but while fucking you know deadpool is beheading yakuza members and stuff like that you know cutting a guy's arms off and shit and you know i mean it's cool but they kind of did that and especially since they had with the celine dion and and stuff like that like it felt a little uh you know off center yeah and then and then and once and not spoilers not spoilers again but you know uh, they there's a whole the same way the the first deadpool had deadpool had that cool intro video where like it's the car and the crash and it's like mid crash and and like it kind of the camera scrolls around the screen and well in this one it's sort of a take on like the james bond movies where like you know it's 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 an it's you don't really see movies with that anymore where they have like a a, uh an intro to the movie where it it has nothing to do with the movie it's all special effects and, and, and you know and but it's it's funny and it's cool. So, like I said, it just it is parts in the in the middle that, in my opinion, kind of drag a little bit. But you know, I, you know, it's one of those deals. Like I feel like between like Guardians of the Galaxy one and Guardians of the Galaxy two, I loved Guardians of the Galaxy one so much that since two, like like if 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 Guardians of the Galaxy and Deadpool like got a ninety nine out of a hundred, Deadpool two and Guardians of the Galaxy two got like a ninety eight. You know what I'm saying? Like, almost as good, but I'm kind of pissed off because both of them should have been hundreds, you know? <laughs> and, and so, like, they're not bad movies, yeah. but, like, I was expecting a little, a little bit, bit more, more. you yeah. know? or, or And, it, like, if it didn't, it felt like it was lacking heart, I guess would be the best way to put it. So, um, so we're getting close to time, but we're, we're we still got some time. Yeah, we're getting close to time. So, so you gotta explain to me, what, what the hell happened with the car situation here? Um, okay, so, and it's funny because it was, like, literally, like, at, like, during, like, Right before recording one of the episodes I did with Austin, uh, we went. To, so you, we went to go see uh, the Last Jedi at your theater. As a, at, your, at your theater, as a matter of fact, uh, him and I and my car just wouldn't start when we got out of the theater, and it was like, like it was like a bunch of snow on the car. And then what happened was it didn't start, but it um, the 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 my alternator went. Right. So you know, Austin gives me a boost. We drive to his house. We record the episode. Uh, now it's time to go home. And I'm like, I, I didn't realize the alternate. I thought it was just the battery, you know, like, oh, he gave me a boost. And so then I go and he gives me a boost. And well, so then I go to his house to record. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go home. Uh, I go to I go to go home and the car just the car just doesn't want. It. And then like that, like it was that point where like it just didn't want to start. So we left it charging for like a minute, you know, like for a little while. And then as I'm driving home, um, my car overheats like the the the, 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 the you know. <laughs> You know where it said you know H and C cool. So, so if it wasn't just it was it wasn't it, just your alternate. So here. then alternate. Then my car overheats. So then I go. I'm like, all right, and I and you know I keep stuff in my trunk. So I'm like, all right, I got I got antifreeze. You know, I got cool into my my trunk. I go to pour it in the car, and it's as I'm pouring it, I'm realizing that it's not going into the. It's just spilling on the street. You know, I'm like, wow. fuck. 
So uh, I, I like luckily where I pulled over it was a gas station. So and I told the guy, and you know, it's funny. Like the guy, the guy who's working there just works there. Like he doesn't care. And I'm like, look, is it a right if I leave my car here? I will get a fucking tow truck to come get. And then, like when we recorded, it was like right after it was like right around Christmas. I'm like, you know, and I'm like, I will have. I will have a tow truck here tomorrow morning. Is that cool? And the guy's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I was like, like, you know, and I was like, but I also like, dude, I don't want, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I'm on your property. I don't want right, to, like, right, you right, know, right. I don't want to. So was your car there when you came back? And so when I came back, I was there, and and the tow truck came, and it basically I just scrapped it. And it's funny because like, you know, I'm like, okay, I don't have a ride. Well, Austin came and he got me. I don't have a right. But then I'm like, the next day I have a tow truck coming, but the tow truck's taking it to just scrap it. So, like, I have to get all my shit out of the car that I'll need to get out of the car, you know? Like, you know, all your shit that you have in the, you know? Um, so we, so, so that had happened. And, uh, you know, I just, and then, you know, luckily where I was working, you know, uh, Austin was giving me rides and stuff like that. And it was yeah. sort of, you know, and then it got to the point where, like, he, he would give me a ride, I'd buy him lunch, and that was sort of like our arrangement, like, you know, I'll buy you lunch, and, you know, we were doing the car casts and stuff like that. And then, like, the day uh, the day after Infinity War, I get a phone call, uh, so the place where you're working at, they you because know, I went through a temp agent, uh, your services are no longer required. <laughs> I'm like fuck, you know, and then they well, go. Well, you weren't the only one, but yeah, yeah, and then they, yeah, and then so then uh, I've heard some interesting things. So. Yeah, and then they, they, yeah, they 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 go. Uh, so they're like, oh, I could get you an interview at this other company on Monday, and I was like, you know, I'm like, you just told me I'm not working. Sure, I'll take whatever interview you got. And so I've been working at the new place for what little less than a month now, and it's not bad. Once again, I wish the pay was better, you know, but I'm kind of hoping that maybe if they make me an offer to be permanent. You know that that's generally a consensus. You work as a temp, you don't get yeah, paid as much. Yeah, and then they try to give you an offer. Yeah. And then you work as a permanent, and then they'll give you the more you know the permanents were actually you know holiday and benefits and insurance and so on and so forth. See, it's getting really. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it just popped up on my phone. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah. Oh, look at Thundercats. It's made things bad worse. Anyway, so so, but didn't you get taxes, money? I, I got my taxes, and the original plan was I was going to buy Austin's car off of him. Um, but it's an older car and, uh, and I, like, it, like, he basically was like, you know, he didn't say it out directly, but I think he's sort of like, I don't want to sell you my car and then my car breaks down. <laughs> I was saying like, he, he didn't like say it, but it was like, it was like, it's kind of an older car. And I think like, even he was like, you know, dude, if I sell you the car and then it, it breaks die. down, you know, and then, you know, like you sold me a lemon. No, you didn't sell, he didn't sell me a lemon. You know, he's, you know, I bought an old car from, so I sort of like, he, I guess he kind of like said, you know, let's, maybe you shouldn't buy my car. But you know, I was I was trying, and but what happened was that I had money I owed to AT and T, I had money I owed to Time Warner, fucking destroying my credit rating. So I got a chance to I, I settled my my issues with AT and T, which was like my biggest debt, you know, because you know they would hit me up for the phone and a tablet and the full price and all this other shit. I got him, I got it worked down to about half of what I actually owed. So that took a big chunk on my tax money, and then you know, uh, you know, trying to. And then, like, I haven't had a credit card in years because my credit was all fucked up. So, um, but now I apply for this. It's called like, like a, it's like a, it's, it's like a credit card, but you send them the money and that's your limit. And yeah. then you work it. And then as you, you pay that amount back off, they report to the credit agency. So I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to get my credit rating back up. So you, you know, can get a loan. You know, and I, and you know, and it went up a couple of points after paying off the AT&T thing. So that's cool. You know, I still own Time Warner a couple bucks. I still owe, uh, 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 you know, progressive, you know, the insurance company because they, they sent me the snapshot and I never sent it back. I, I don't know where the hell it is. They sent me the snapshot like right around the, the same week my car died. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh shit. And I can't find it. And I, I don't know if I left it in the car. And, uh, so. Snapshot of what? The, you know, the, the snapshot, you, you, you plug it into the thing. You know the thing. Oh, where you're, right, 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 right. Where they, when you have like a code in your car that you plug it in there, and it basically it it snitches on you. It's a little GPS device. If you turn the car hard, like if you make a hard turn, it beeps, and then it sends a fucking report to Progressive. If you accelerate too fast, it beeps. Uh, you know, like it it, it snitches. And they call it the snapshot because it keeps track of your driving style for like six months and if you're like a, a safe driver you're not driving at night or you know whatever you know if you you know like we say oh i only drive my car to go to and from to work and you know and they're like well we see that your car is operating 24 hours a day you know if it because it, 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 it knows when you pull it out i guess like it stops sending a signal it's it keeps like a constant signal um it snitches to progressive so you know so that's the whole 
long and short of the of the snapshot, you know. So, and so you then, need a car. So yeah. basically, we need to start get Chris a car phone. Is that yeah, what's going I, I, we might do a Kickstarter. I, I was thinking maybe like a like a Patreon slash Kickstarter. I don't know. <laughs> start selling off my comic books. Like, you, if you support the Patreon, I'll mail you my shitty comic books that I don't want anymore <laughs> as a reward, quote unquote reward. Um, so I know you got to get ready to go. So I will uh, probably just uh, take the outro stuff from the from the last episode and just edited this in uh so we certainly hope you guys enjoyed ah we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening had as much fun as we did recording thank you for listening to two strangers one podcast i'm chris i'm paul don't be a stranger peace we're out bye you should be fapping yeah don't be a stranger chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm a hypocrite <laughs> Please visit twostrangersonepodcast.net where you can find all things show related. First and foremost, you can find links to our iTunes page where you can subscribe to us on your iPhone, iPad, or iPod. Who still has an iPad or iPod? I don't know. But uh, if you do, you can subscribe to us there. We are on Android devices on the Stitcher app. That's S-T-I-S-T-H-C. Oh, boy. <laughs> S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. The Stitcher app for Android devices. Uh, you can listen on- offline. Listen later. Available offline. And download all your episodes. You're in a Wi-Fi spot, like a local library, a McDonald's, or anything like that. And then uh, listen to them later without killing your battery or your data plan. Um, and of course, like I mentioned before, we are on uh, SoundCloud, and I do make all the available, all the episodes available for download. I don't know if there. I still had an issue with Android devices. I don't know if you could still download them on Android devices, but um, you should be able to download them uh, to the episodes, or at least definitely off the SoundCloud website. If you want to write the show, you can write to us at two strangers one podcast at gmail.com. That's all spelled out. Two strangers one podcast at gmail.com. I'm just gonna check the mail just real quick and see if Oscar has sent the mail at all. Um he's, he's been beating me up the past couple of episodes, but you know, that's par for the course. Um then there I believe is... he also sent Paul Logan. Oh, he did? If he did, I I'm not aware of it, but you should talk to Paul. Look at <laughs> how that circle comes back around. See? <laughs> chat with Paul I'm pretty sure he did and if you want to uh, reach us uh, I'm excuse me if you want to tweet at us you could tweet us at stranger podcast at stranger podcast um, is okay I'm, I, while I'm doing this I'm trying to get into my uh, I'm trying to get email. into my gmail account which is being a pain in the ass right now so I'll save that for later um, what else what else what else our twitter if you want to follow us we, 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 of course we want your money we need your money but if we can't get a dime from you the least you could do is share and like this episode on facebook we're on facebook.com facebook.com slash two strangers one podcast all spelled out um, once again let all the people know uh, that you like the show and once again you know just, just get people interested into it uh, let me see what else I can't think of anything else. Let me see. Nope. No. No letters from Oscar as I check for my phone. Uh, that's about. I'm it. sure you'll get one after this. Episode. Like, <laughs> Why the fuck did you have that? Bitch Why the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> can't stand her fucking laugh. Her Crazy. voice is horrible. You know, you Your finally audio get audio sucks. You, it was like you finally get the audio fixed, and then you have her on. <laughs> what the fuck, man? That's right. You know what? The thing is, I got nothing to love for him. So <laughs> uh, that's the funny thing is, well, like, you're you, gonna have some. I mean, you're not. I'm not everybody's going to like you, and that's okay. You know, that's how it is in life and everything. So you just either you know take it personal, or you're just like you know, well, okay, like me or whatever. It's all right, at least he. Is Look, and, uh, to He's me, listening. Kind of, yeah, I mean, you know, so I love him for the that. Past, the past couple, you know, the past couple episodes, you know, you know, we've had interactions with Tommy B, with Chris Mounts. Uh, you know, oh, there's been more with Tommy. Oh, yeah. well, See, I mean, I gotta go back and listen. Well, I well he, I mean, episodes. they interact on the on the Facebook pages and stuff like that. And, oh, okay. and I always say thank you, know, thank you to the loyal listeners and everything like that. Well, hell yeah. You know, uh, you know, and even and once again, even uh, even Oscar, you know. He, he, I interact with the people that love me, and I interact with the people that hate me. You know what I'm saying? So either way, interact with the we're people gonna... who are interacting. Period. Exactly. Thank God for doing it. Yeah. Guys. Thank you for interacting, and exactly. thank you for listening. Uh, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening and had as much fun as we did recording. Thank, thank you. you for listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Jen. Don't be a stranger. Bye. Peace. We're out. Bye. You should be fapping. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee. But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. Him punny. But... <laughs> 
<laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a <sighs> materialistic I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, <laughs> fucking. Are you sure I didn't write this? <laughs> Uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Well, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in Lotto history. Much like the recent Powerball, both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show, I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be so honest too. with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, and if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. That's, com. I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it still. Lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15, and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. Five dollars is yeah. insanely inexpensive. Fifteen's not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No. This is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on! Come, I, like I it. can see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm going to make that smelly joke. I all. know. You're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal, video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker, and his book, Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. How is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. You could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.